welcome to the CCI Grand River Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Michelle Dyer, and we'd like to thank RLB LLP for this awesome podcast studio. Today is episode 27, and we're discussing some challenges in condominiums. And I say that as I giggle, but in all truth, um, one of the conversations I've had over the last number of years as a property manager, as a contractor, is how to communicate in condominiums with tenants. And there are so many restrictions for property managers and contractors that it can become quite challenging to communicate just on the day-to-day basis. So helping me discuss that today and what we can do to communicate with tenants and how we can help owners help us communicate with tenants is Stephanie Sutherland. Actually, you know what? Forget it. I'm not going to introduce Stephanie. Stephanie's going to introduce herself. (laughs) Go ahead, Stephanie. Thanks, Michelle. Um, My name is Stephanie Sutherland. I'm a condo lawyer with Cohen Hiley working out of the Kitchener office. I've been practicing in condo for many years now, helping (laughs) condo corporations and and boards and managers and owners uh, and sometimes tenants, um, you know, navigate the condo world. Excellent. And joining us as well is? I'm Mark Rasso. I'm a senior condominium manager with MF Property Management. I've been there for about nine years now and have lots of experience dealing with uh, tenants and owners who don't want to make the tenants their responsibility. (laughs) They'd rather make it mine and uh, dealing with lawyers on that as well. So. I've asked Mark to join us. Obviously, Stephanie, being a lawyer, I've asked Mark to join us because when I was with MF Property Manager, as a property manager, I um, saw some of the things that Mark went through. Mark had buildings that consisted of a lot of tenants. We all do. Uh, uh, we're not alone there. Um, all the property managers I know today, um, we were just talking to, to Randy Rigo, who's from Wilson Blanchard. He also has a lot of buildings with tenants. And there, there seems to be a constant pattern of communication. And that communication is lack thereof. That seems to be the constant issue with tenants is that, and Stephanie, you can maybe talk a little bit more about this, is the restrictions on contractors, property managers. We can't, we're not allowed to talk to tenants. So how does that work when we're trying to do some of the day-to-day functions of a condo community? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're allowed to talk to them. Like, you're allowed to say, hey. Like, oh, nice <laughs> oh, we are? Okay, wait a minute. Write that down, Mark. We are allowed to say hi. Okay. Um, no, but seriously, yeah, you're not allowed to communicate with the tenant uh, with respect to anything that's going on with the the unit, even really, um, for the most part, in terms of decision making. Um, and you're not allowed to speak with the tenant, really, in terms of what's going on in the condo. Like, the, the unit owner really has to be that go between between the tenant and the condo manager, the board, et cetera. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a difficult thing, especially if the owner's uh, not living on site and isn't particularly involved. It causes problems. Well, and that's, and I don't want to harp on the negative, but Mark, let's talk about some of the challenges that you've experienced in just the last couple of years with tenants, like in the yeah. sense of, um, just on the day-to-day and how it can affect if a tenant's not aware of what's going on. Yeah, well, I mean, this one of the things we hear a lot as managers, and I just heard this last week, is someone will call me or email me and say, oh, I've just moved into this condo as a tenant, and my landlord told me to call you with because you can help me with all of this stuff. Right. And the landlord's not exactly wrong. I do, I can help with all that stuff, but I, it's, like we said, I have to help the owner with that stuff. Um, whether that's, you know, getting them in the intercom, uh, helping them, where, where do I park? Where, what do I do with my, where, where's my storage locker? Um, parking tags, anything like that. And um, again, a lot of owners will pass that off thinking, oh, I'm paying for property management with my condo fees, therefore this person manages my unit for me. And it's not the case. Like, again, they're your tenant, they're not my tenant. So, um, that's a constant challenge of just trying to get people to understand who they need to be going to for certain things and really uh, making sure owners understand that, again, they're, that's their tenant, not the condo's tenant, and they need to be taking responsibility for getting them the information they need. Um, we'll do everything we can to make it available for the owner, make it as easy as we can, yeah. um, whether that's websites, emails, whatever, um, but ultimately it is you know, they need to be the ones responsible for passing that along to their tenant and not just shooing them towards, (laughs) towards me. Well, that's it. I even remember just 
dealing with owners whose tenants went a little rogue <laughs> and not understanding what they moved into or not understanding that they had to book the elevator and holding the elevator door open while they're loading in a couch. And then elevators in condos are not the same as elevators in buildings, people. They actually close and will close on your couch <laughs> and will freeze there. And it's about $500 to get that couch out and reset the elevator. So yeah. they don't realize that that can cause additional expense for an owner when you are not involved yeah. when the tenant moves in. Yeah. And Mark actually brought up a really good point. Um, the, the confusion between property managers, uh, right? Yes. There's the condo property manager who is there to manage the condo on behalf of the condo corporation working with the board. And then many landlord unit owners will also have a property manager yeah. who manages their rental manages their rental property. But those are not the same thing. That's right. And they do not have the same responsibilities. <laughs> well, and I think over the years we're seeing more and more um, property managers that are condominium managers retitling themselves. Like yes. we see now, I, I noticed your signature now says condominium manager, not yes. property manager, because there is a distinction. And people need to understand that there is a difference. Mm -hmm. um, so, Stephanie, what are some of the challenges that you would see from a legal point of view, um, tenant owner? Yeah. So one of the big ones is the conflict between the Residential Tenancies Act and the Condo Act. Okay. And there's a few really common examples that come up. Uh, pets and smoking are two big ones. Parking also, but pets and smoking is big. Because under the Residential Tenancies Act, a landlord is not allowed, with certain very specific exceptions, is not allowed to prohibit pets in a rental unit. Right. However, as we know, a condo <laughs> is absolutely allowed to prohibit pets yeah. in units if it's in the declaration or the rules. Um, and and that supersedes the provision in the Residential Tenancies Act. I was going to say, which one? Which one's higher? Yeah, so yeah. the Condo Act is higher, um, but owners often don't know that, and tenants definitely don't know that. So a tenant, very understandably, if it's not properly laid out, and there there is a place in the standard form lease for it, but owners don't always necessarily you know, point that out or really make sure the tenant understands. So if the tenant doesn't see that or really get it, they'll, they may look at the lease and say, well, the landlord's not allowed to tell me I, I can't have any pets. I read that that's void, even if it says it, so I'm not going to worry about that, yeah. which would be true if it wasn't a condo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden they have a 60-pound dog coming in in a condo that only allows 20 pound dogs yeah. and now you're working through legal yeah. working through your letters and management um, you know protocols and procedures to talk to the owner to get the dog removed the tenants fighting to get that's not gonna happen yeah. and now it's costing the owner of that unit a lot of money mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. One of the challenges, and I this is a really good example of a huge challenge that can happen in a condominium when you have an owner who is not involved. And this is a, a this is a true, very true story. This is one of mine, and I want to bring this up because of the challenges and then what happened. So long, very long story. Uh, um, tenant moved in. We didn't know she was a tenant. The owner never registered themselves on the unit, let alone registering the tenant <coughs> on the unit. The tenant then decided that her pet, she had a dog, um, should be relieving themselves on their balcony. Of course,